the Art and Industry of Business and Living podcast, discussing conscious choices around business, money, life and living and creating a greater future for you and the planet. everybody, welcome to the art and industry of business and living. You are with your host, Simone Millicis, and I am actually at home, odd enough. I'm at Bridgian Beach in Australia, and I have two of my dearest, 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 dearest friends here, Woo-hoo! is Shutissa and Steve Bowman. Welcome again onto this radio show. Hi, everyone. Hi, Simone. Hi, Simone. <laughs> so I'm so incredibly grateful for you guys coming on here. You're always such a contribution. And I say let's get right into it because we have a great topic for today. And it's called being needless in business. Now, I know when so many people read those words, being needless in business, it's not normal. It's really different to have that sort of point of view. So I was wondering if you could talk to me a little bit, first of all, is what is being needless in business? What does that look like? Well, to us, being needless is where you need no one and you need nothing. You have no need of clients. You have no need of money. You have no need of any, everywhere where there's a need is a limitation that you've already put in place. So being needless is, in business is constantly functioning from that question, so what do I need to be and do so that me and my business are needless? Needlessness is my favourite topic. I have been looking at being in that space for quite a few years now since Gary Douglas introduced us to that concept of needlessness. And I have been in the question about what would it take for me to be needless to start off with is about me because uh, we are doing a lot of businesses together, Steve and I, and we uh, started to be questioned about what would it be like to be needless in business as well. And and it's become so generative for us when we started to uh, create our business from a space of needlessness. So I'm going to start with some obvious questions that I know listeners out there, you know, might have. And I mean, Steve, you said need no one and need nothing, like including clients, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So of course, the obvious question is going to be like, well, how do you create your business? Well, through that point of view. So if you need no clients, then you can choose clients. If you have no need of money, then you can manipulate money. As soon as you've got a need for something, then all you can see is trying to fulfill that need and you miss out all the other possibilities that are available to you because you're focused, so focused on trying to meet the need that you fail to see all the other possibilities that are there. So um, what, we do, what we're looking at with our business always is how, how can we be needless of clients? What would that look like if we were needless? So we're starting to structure our business so we no longer need clients and we keep the clients as well. Why not have both? Oh, I I, I just get what you just asked that question then, Simone, because for us, needlessness is a space of being. You know, it's not about doing. So if if we can function from a space of needlessness, then we don't go from the space of desperation. You know how often when people run a business, they need money. So they go into the space of, oh, I need money, I need money. So every choice and every decision they make come from the space of needing money. So they become so desperate of uh, having to have the client, having to have the project, having to have uh, certain things, staffs and partners and all those. But if we actually truly can come from a space of needlessness, it's the energy, space and consciousness that we are being, that we're willing to receive everyone and everything, but we are not in the desperation of having to have anything. So it becomes about choice. I love that. Mm. It becomes about infinite choice available rather than, I mean, I remember at one stage in Access Consciousness, we would talk about the choosing and chosen. And I mean, God, if you take it back to, you know, teenage, teenager relationship, when you're chosen to be, you know, the girlfriend or the boyfriend, it's like you receive that as the chosen. So then you have no choice in it rather than actually be the choosing. So you guys are talking more about, you are the choosing, not someone choosing you. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, it makes sense. I think it's 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 that, and it's more than that as well too, because this whole this whole energy of needlessness is probably one of the most attractive energies that will attract other things or allow you to see things as they are. I mean, the, the interesting thing is people go into needless means that I won't have anything. No, no, no. Needless is where you don't actually need it. And that's, I think, probably the most difficult thing for people to, to grasp is that when we say, well, we're working towards where we don't need clients. Okay, well, what happens when you don't have clients? I never said I wouldn't have clients, but it's where we don't, just don't need, need them. them. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. And I get the level of receiving that comes with that is not, uh, you know, tangible in, in this reality. It's like you can't sort of, you know, measure the level of receiving when you are just willing to either have it or not have it. Mm. Like well, it can just show up. You know, that energy of needless is once we can do that, we're coming from the space of no projection, no expectation, no assumption, no conclusion, and no judgment. Uh, Gary wrote uh, a new book on that, and that's exactly, you know, what, what we're looking at. If we could create our life and our reality from a space of no conclusion, no projection, no expectation, no assumption, and no judgment, that is a true energy, space, and consciousness of needlessness. So let's talk about creation then with needlessness. It's like what does creation look like in your business with being needless? It's it's actually really exciting because Chutissa and I will talk probably daily about, okay, so what would it be like if if we were functioning from needlessness? And what it does is it tweaks our universe so we start to look at things a little bit differently so that um, when we're starting to look at um, – you know, investments, for example, which is one of our businesses, what would it be like if we could actually create and generate investments where we were needless of other people, where we didn't have to sell anything, where we were needless of people buying things from us, where we were needless of other people actually um, having control over the finances. And it's it's really interesting because when you start to function with that, you start to look at things differently. So we've been able to find a couple of things that have always been there, but because we weren't asking or being those questions, we never actually knew existed, that are actually creating a whole new business stream for us. And we use that in all parts of our business. So, you know, with our conscious governance business, where we work with CEOs and boards around the world, we're looking at, so what would it like, what would it be like for us to be needless in that space? And that also is generating a whole different way of looking at businesses. So now we're looking at yeah, have other CEOs are coming to join us so that they're actually now working with clients. We're not working with them as well as us working with the clients. So the really interesting thing about needlessness is that if you're willing to tap into that as an energy, you can have it all, but it's from that space of needlessness and it's from that space that enables us to look at business in a totally different way so that we can add to our business, we can add to our life as well as doing the other things that we enjoy as well. I love that. And I love the way you talk about, I mean, I look at investment and to me, anytime I've ever invested in, in anything, I'm willing to lose it. So that's that place of functioning from the needlessness, because if I invested in the outcome, then it creates a very different energy rather than being needless. So let's talk about money with being needless as well. Yeah, that's exactly the, the thing, though. I mean, money is the key contribution to people being needy. Because when you talk to people about setting up the business or creating something, the first thing they, they talk about is because they need to create money. What if that's not true. What if uh, the creation is about creating different possibilities and, uh, you know, if, if we are creating our business, creating our reality from a space of creating different possibilities, you cannot connect the, the sense of needy to different possibilities. Uh, we can only connect the sense of needy to, I need to make more money in business. I need to make more money when I invest. I need to make more money so I can choose the right stock to invest in. You know, those are the kind of things people tend to get into when they go into creation. So what I would inv invite everyone to look, what would it be like if creation is about 
to create different possibilities. Can you have the neediness from that space if you are creating everything from just for the fun of it, for creating different possibilities. You can't connect the space of needing and being needing to create money from that space. No, and one of the greatest tools that I've been playing with at the moment too, which so matches the energy here, is the irrational and rational mm. and something we've been talking about in Access Consciousness. And as you're talking, I'm, I'm you know, getting so much that being needy, like needing to create money. It's like, you know, getting the quarter in. It's like getting the, the finances up for the, you know, the shareholders, et cetera, is all about the rational point of view and the reason and justification for having to create that rather than one of the things that we've been talking about is being irrational. And it's like being irrational in business is the willingness to receive that gift of possibilities. Like you're talking about possibilities. It goes outside of where you can cognitively, you know, come up with and leads into the complete and utter gift of possibilities with no reason for why you're choosing something, just knowing that there's these elements of creation, you know, about following the energy, Mm -hmm. which I get what you're talking about leads into that. It's like this following the energy of this yes, no universe, Mm -hmm. you know, like it's like, okay, should we do this? Yes, no, <laughs> with no rhyme or reason. And Simone, uh, we we know each other for quite many years now. And I think it's like sixteen years, yes, going on seventeen yes, years. Did you say? It's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> but it is. You know, ever since I know you, ever since then, before we even know the uh, the, the notion of irrational, I think you accept. Uh, 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 you you are the one who always function from that space anyway, in business and as a leader. You know, even when we when you were doing your uh, traveling traveling through uh, India and all those sort of things, that's a space you are functioning in. That's a business that that's why you're so successful in everything you do. Oh. Thanks, Chichisa. Same as you guys, though. And that's what I would like to give the listeners here freedom is that being needless in business is something that can expand your business. It's, you know, not going from, like as Steve said, that original point of view of, you know, well, now we don't have anything or it means we don't have clients or it means we don't have money or it means this. It doesn't mean anything. It literally doesn't mean anything. Being needless in business is, you know, being in question all the time. And having that creation that shows up instantaneously, I love this. So what do you see a world being like if if all businesses were willing to function from being needless? It would unlock a tsunami of creativity and possibility because what's locking most businesses up is their neediness of something, their need for clients, their need for money, their need for, and that need stops any creation because they're focused on trying to fulfil that need. So the power of needlessness and the power of a really, really good business leader is someone who functions from creation. So what can I create here? What else is willing to be created? What are the other creations I can do? Money follows that. Money does not follow neediness. I know. It's actually, like you said before, Steve, it is one of the most unattractive things in the world, like that needy energy. <laughs> it's like, And you can perceive it. Like all you have to do is walk into, you know, well, not you, Steve, but, a, a, you know, a clothing shop, a lady's clothing shop, and the salesperson that you know is getting paid commission and needs something or needs to make sales is you just want to walk back out again. It's not an attractive energy at all. Mm. So if you no longer have a reason for anything and a reason for needing, it's like then what's possible? What can you give to the listeners to start functioning from this new energy? Do you know, Simone, when you asked the question uh, 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 before about what would the business world be like if we all functioned from needless, needlessness, you know, what, what came up for me is benevolent capitalism and benevolent leadership. That is space of needlessness. If we could just be wishing well for all, so all of the questions, all of the choices we make would be not from a space of needy and grabby and trying to get just for me, but be willing to make choices and create different possibilities for everyone concerned and wishing well for all. So when you ask that question, what would the business be like? It would be like 
wishing well for all when we can function for needlessness. So we've got a scenario. You've got a company who, you know, has to get the figures in or has to get some sort of, you know, budget, etc. And it's like, how does that business go about starting to function from this new energy? So when we function from needless, like we will look at, okay, we would like to achieve certain... Uh, Here's the change budget. that we want this to create. Here's the change we want to create. But how much money could we create with that is also the question that we ask. And then we will function in the question. We will look at, let's say, if we have a few projects coming in and they're all coming in at the same time that we all have to make a choice which one we would choose to to do, then we go into the question about it. Which one would create greater possibility for us, for the clients now and, and into the for future. everyone concerned and now and in the future? And we take the money out of computation of the whole thing because if we use the money as the way to make the choice, then there would be no question in that. We will immediately go into accept the project that pay the most money. And we stopped doing that a while back when we stopped using the money as the, the, the choice we made because quite a lot of time we have, you know, a lot of projects that will pay us a lot more money than some of the projects that we actually accepted. But we have found that the project that didn't pay us a lot of money when we accepted that because we able to create we, we were in the question, follow the energy, and we knew that it's going to create greater possibilities. It might not give us uh, the amount of money for that project, but in the long run, it's created so much more for our business and for the clients, for everyone. And at the end, the money that actually uh, we receive from it, so much more than if we receive that pro- the other project that pay us a lot of money right there and then. So here's the big question. Are you making more money or less money now? <laughs> Way more money. And the interesting thing is we can see there is no end to it. There is no stopping. And this is the, the power of needlessness is that you're constantly looking to see what that would be like. It's not an end point because every time, I, yeah, if, if, for example, we attained the state of needlessness, then we'd be probably probably looking at how we could be needless of being needless. So it's it's an it's, it's always an ongoing uh, um, energy and always an ongoing thing. And the exciting thing for us is that we have so, we have got so many things going on, so many businesses going on, all of them generating really really significant amounts of money, and we're needless of all of that. Which means that we don't stop ever looking or creating or thinking. You've got it. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you because I, I mean, I, I have known you guys for quite a while now, and the level of change that occurs in your lives and your choices is quite phenomenal. Like you, you two people change everything all the time, like every day. So to I get the ability to make those choices to change everything is creating more for you all the time. Oh, absolutely. You know, we added more and more. Like last year, we added being the right riches for you facilitator onto our become the number eight business that we added. And look, our life has been growing and expanding beyond we could ever imagine. And so have all the other businesses. And, And so other businesses as well. But the thing is, more importantly, I have grown and expand so much more since I was willing to add right riches for you onto my life. You know, I had to be willing to be more in every aspect. And and what I'm saying is if you are willing to add more to your life, willing to let go of the limitation, willing to let go of uh, keeping yourself small, Uh, The need to keep yourself small, I suppose, is like you could never look back. But when you were talking before about needless, what came up also is about it's connect to have no need to prove. 
You know, that question that True. we often hear about, uh, uh, am I proving or am I creating here? So if we let go of the need to prove, then you will always be creating. And I found that the day that I stopped the need to prove to myself, the need to prove to anything, um, we started to create more. I don't know whether you can recall when we did the uh, business time call with Gary probably two or three months ago, Simone. Yeah. And Gary said to me, uh, I asked him, for example, about, you know, the need, the need to prove. And he said to me, you know, that uh, if you don't, if you stop proving that you are intelligent or smart or something like that, that's <laughs> it and change. And you had a long conversation to him about it as well. I think I remember you said, but Chutisa is smart. I know. And, that's the and, funny thing. It's like, it, I mean, how many people try and prove something that is so obvious anyway? And Gary said, yes, you know that, Simone, but she doesn't. So, so <laughs> talking about which and what. But I was being in the question the whole time about what he meant by that. And I realized that when he said to me that if I stop needing to prove that I am smart, and he's not, I realized that he was not talking about me getting to prove to anyone that I am smart because no one really cares whether I'm smart or not. And I realized that I have to stop the need to prove to myself that I am smart, you know, because as long as I have the need to prove to myself that I am smart, then I am not choosing to totally embody and be or everything that I can be because I would have to have a judgment that I am not smart to prove to myself that I am smart. So well, you would have to you would have to judge everything that you choose each day, each moment. Was this a smart choice or not a smart choice rather than it's just a choice? Absolutely. So that that it, the witch and walk in itself is totally changed everything because first I thought, oh, have I have been proving to the world that I am smart? And I thought, no, I don't. Actually, I don't really care whether anyone think of me, whether I'm smart or not. And then I realized, ah, if I am constantly have to prove myself, to myself that I am smart, who am I being? Am I how much conclusion and judgment do I have of myself for everything I be and do? And from that moment that I had an aha moment about stop proving to myself that I am smart, wow, I just being greater than what I have been willing to be before. So people out there listening, it's like if you look at any area of your life that you are trying to prove something, it's like what if you could acknowledge that and then look at what else you could choose if you weren't trying to prove something. And I get these tools are quite confronting and you've got to be quite vulnerable in the willingness to have a look at what you are trying to prove. Most most of the time in the workspace, people are trying to prove that they're you know, great at their job rather than actually just being great at your job, you know, or the capacities that you have are different than anybody else. So if you can ask that question, you know, am I trying to prove something here or create something? It's like what if you could function from creation and not the proving energy? Well, the, 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 the real fun part about this proving creation, because I've, I've just had the hugest amount of fun with it, is that if you're willing to see something that you've just done was from a state of proving, okay, now if I was going to do it different, how would I do it from a state of creation? and then do it again, it creates all sorts of different things um, and other possibilities. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit too late. So, oh, shit, I just did that to prove something. Okay, now let me try that again <laughs> from, the, from the energy of creation. And, yeah. And and I've done it with emails. Yeah, I've sent an email out and I felt good sending it out because I made my point. Uh, am I doing that to prove? Oh, God, I was doing that to prove. Okay, so to create one. So I sent another email out to the same person but from the energy of creation and guess what it did? It created. Created. <laughs> right, I love it. Hey, I want to talk to you guys to ask you a question with this being needless in business and Chitisu, you mentioned you know, one of the new revenue streams and businesses you have is Right Riches for you. What I personally notice with both of you is your level of commitment when you choose something. 
Like you're not just sort of putting one toe in, you guys go, okay, let's do this. And you jump all in. So can you talk about the level of commitment that's required or what is that like for you guys when you do choose a new business, new revenue stream? Yeah. Uh, for me, is uh, I, I think it's an operative state of my being anyway. I, I am either in or I am not doing it. Yeah, that's true. So if, <laughs> if, I think Steve will vouch for that too. <laughs> yes. So if I made the choice that I am going to be in, I am fully in. And I when I see people make a choice, oh, yes, I am in, but, you know, maybe I'm just waiting for something to change before I can, I can fully in. If I say to someone I'm going to be in, I will be doing everything no matter what it takes for me to create that. And I remember, uh, you know, uh, the home of infinite possibilities, Gary often talk about totally committed to your life or committed to this reality. And I made the commitment to commit to my life. And I realized that that moment when I did that, I um, made the commitment to, I if I'm going to commit to my life, when I choose to be in, I be in right there and I take action in that moment onwards. When people put things on their to-do list, I've already done the five things that need to be done immediately to actualize that. So that's a, I suppose I'm blessed to have that obsessive, compulsive state of being, but I'm sure everyone can cultivate and develop that, right? Yeah, but you choose that, Chutisi, and that's, I think, the choice that people need to start making and having a look at is because it's not necessarily you committing to this project or this business. The commitment to your life, I get, is what has created that difference, which then, you know, unravels in showing up as if you're committing to your life and committing to the choices that you're making then, of course, that's going to come through in, you know, right riches for you, in benevolent capitalism, in, you know, conscious governance, in all the different books and companies and businesses and revenue streams that you guys are creating. So is there anything else you can offer out there to people, you know, listening to this going, God, what does that look like? How do I even just start? Do you know one thing that came up right now is that when we made commitments to to be part of anything, we never actually go into how are we going to do that. We we actually make a choice and say, okay, so what do we need to put our energy into now and one, one step in front of ourselves at the time to create that. And uh, the last uh, year that since we joined, right, which is for you, and what I became aware of, people want to know the how all the time. You know, everything, the question always come up, how? And we keep on saying, just make the choice. Make the choice and what it would take will transpire, but most people cannot actually let go of, I need to know the how first before I actually choose. So if the listener listening to this is everything that you want to create and generate, if you totally commit to uh, it, because after you be in the question and know that it's going to create greater possibility, make a hundred percent commitment to do it, even though you have no ideas about what it would look like or what it would take for that to happen. Make a commitment to choose and then be in the question and immediately, immediately put something into action. Otherwise, you're going to put into do list and two weeks later, it's still on that to do list. So if you make a commitment to choose to do something, just do it. You know, the only time I ever write to-do list to Tissa is when I'm about to go on a plane. <laughs> and most of the people that I work with go, hey, if you're up for it when you're on the plane, you know, if you're getting bored, here's a little list of things I'd love you to look at or, you know, or do, et cetera. And it's funny because the amount of times that I do that to-do list is, is almost like 1%. Because I usually get on and I'm like, it's so nice to have like, you know, a glass of champagne, watch a movie and have no one bothering you. But every now and then I get that to-do list out when, and I have a look at it if I can't sleep. So it's interesting. I've also got a question that you guys can 
not to Tissa and Steve, everyone else out there listening, to help you along the way here is what we're talking about is, you know, the being irrational and not trying to work it out, not going to the how, as Tissa said, because how is always based on a judgment and you've got to find reasons and justifications for choosing something rather than just choosing. So a question you can ask too is, what irrational choice can I make today that will continuously increase my business and money flows right away? And see if that starts to change anything. And you can use the access consciousness clearing statement after it of right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds, if you so desire. You can find out more about that on theclearingstatement.com. But ask, what irrational choices can I make today that will continuously increase my business and my money flows right away? Or you can even just say, uh, what irrational choices can I make today that will continuously increase my life today? It's like it can be anything. It invites you to come out of that how and that reason and justification into that level of creation that, you know, comes so naturally with Stephen Chutissa, and yet they also still work on themselves all the time and continuously ask questions and not going to the wrongness of them, which I love that when you're saying, Steve, you know, you send an email and go, oh, okay, that was about proving. <laughs> it's like now I send another email and look at if, if I was functioning from the state of creation and question, what would it be? And then it starts to create. And this, this, all of these tools creates your life and your business and your money flows to be way easier. It doesn't have to be hard. So irrational, irrational choice is the same as just follow the energy. Is that because it you is. cannot it be is. irrational if you just follow the energy? Exactly. But how many people, when they go to follow the energy, then they try and work out the how? I see that all the time. Rather than what I've been looking at is the yes no universe. And I've been playing with that tool of going, okay, even, you know, would I like to eat this or would I like to go there or choose this or make this phone call? Yes, no. And I mean, I was in Japan recently and I was going out to lunch with a friend of mine and I rang him in the morning and said, okay, we've got to take these two people because they just got this. Yes, we need to take them. And at the end of the lunch, he went, my God, that was amazing. He said, what got created? And we didn't talk about anything specifically. It was just required energy to be at lunch with these people. So it was like, okay, yes, I get a yes. I'm not going to try and work out the how. And I see so many people go to the following the energy, but then they, they start to not ask a question, they start to question following the energy and start to go into the doubt, which is the rational universe, not the irrational, where you just go, yep, let's go, let's do it. Because you never know what's going to show up, you know, as you guys are in the adventure of living and business is what you guys create as well. So people pretend to follow the energy by saying, oh, it feels light, I want to follow it. But then they already have the how in place uh, before they even say that it's light, right? So yeah, how already often do you hear people that they already have a conclusion, expectation and judgment about what the business is supposed to look like and what they expect to get from the business already and what outcome they're going to get. And they go into the question about, oh, is this going to be light and heavy? And they say, oh, it's still light because <laughs> the lightness is the part. Every conclusion that they already have exactly. about the business yes. And, and that's the, the, the thing that's saying that, um, you know, most people are done creating the business based on what it could happen, but on what they expected it to happen. So even by being the question and say, oh, I'm just following the energy that it feels so light that for me to choose to do this business, it is just the, just a pretense trying to use the tools to support the decision that you already set in stone. So well, it's funny. You said it, like, in, and we've been talking about that. It's like people go to the decision of the rational elements of creation rather than being the irrational miracle of creation. And that being the irrational miracle of creation is that place of question and choice and, you know, the adventure of it and the willingness to be needless, the willingness to be wrong, the w willingness to be right, the willingness to have and be at all. It's like, let's bring that on. So have you created anything recently, Simone, that you could uh, give the listener example of irrational creation that you have? I'm sure you have millions, but uh, I, when you said that, I thought, oh, I'm sure Simone would have something wonderful to share. Yeah, I changed the whole business of Joy of Business up. I was willing to let the whole entire thing go. I was so bored. 
and we actually did a, a podcast about it, which I, I think aired last week. So you can, if you go to simonemelissas.com forward slash podcast, you can find out. And it's called Being Irrational in Business. And uh, I was ready to let the whole thing go because I was bored. It was, you know, it was felt like there was no creation in it anymore. It was a whole lot of conclusions, decisions, and control. And that is one of the most boring things in the world is when everyone is trying to control what's going on rather than create. So they were incredibly shocked, everyone that I work with, because they went, seriously, you're willing to let this whole thing go? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And it's like, if I let it go, there's more space for something different. There's space for something needless, else to show up. Yeah. Needless, That's yeah. a space of needless. But it was interesting because they never really thought that I was willing to let the business go. And I'm like, yep, absolutely. And then things started to change. Then they started to actually question what they desired and where they were controlling and what they could change and what they wanted to be involved in as well. And the whole business is like, it's like we threw everything up in the air and went, okay, let's see if it lands, where it lands and what that looks like. So it's still in the movement of creation. And I tell you, it's a lot more fun tapping into the energy of joy of business now. It is the joy of business now. <laughs> that is wonderful. And that's that. what you said there is, even if we have, you know, business out there in the corporate world or small businesses or being an entrepreneur, if we function, if, if, if staff thinks that we need to be successful, you know, like if staff thinks that, oh, we are the owner of the business and these people have the need to be successful, then they really have the power over us, isn't it? It is. And, you know, Chichisa and Steve, because I know you're there, even though it's like it's the girl show. <laughs> no. uh, yeah. I still haven't got my three-minute egg time again. <laughs> well, I was talking to Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, yesterday, and he said to me, you have to be aware of who you put into lead of things because if someone, and there's very few people who can be a true leader, if they're not a true leader, if they cannot lead, then what they do is they go into the place of like, oh, I'm in charge now and I have control. And they will start to collapse it and they'll start to diminish the project rather than actually asking people to contribute to it and maybe guide things. And he said, but you keep thinking that everybody can lead everything. Like if you go, well, you're leading this, they will. And so I'm realizing how few leaders there are. And to me, I mean, great idea for another podcast. You know, a leader has that ability and the willingness to change everything and anything at all times and the willingness to lose it, the willingness to have it. It's like being needless in business is what we're talking about. That's being a leader. Wow. I love what you said about being in charge. I, I say one second. Well, let Steve say it. Otherwise, I'm taking over this podcast that... Uh, being in charge is collapsing everything because you need to prove that you are in charge, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And then they go, I'm in control and I'm in command. And they start this sort of like command energy rather than a question energy, which is something completely different. Chutissa just nudged me saying, say something, otherwise I think you've gone. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got something for your listeners, which has just been okay. amusing, me, awesome. amusing me hugely over the last couple of months, and that's a little mantra that they might want to consider looking at. And the mantra goes something like this, the how is easy, choose, but I don't know how. Oh, the how is easy, choose, but I don't know how. Oh, the how is easy, choose. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it just it just amuses me. I love so, that. So just just yeah, you know, because we find this. We've just come. We've just finished uh, uh, yesterday the last uh, call in our three month series on prosperity and wealth. And one of the insights awarenesses that we came to is that we, we loved the whole group. There was two hundred and sixty of us. It was brilliant. But one of the really interesting things is that people still, by default, try and go into the how of something with absolutely no question. And if we were able to do anything, it would be to give people the awareness that the how is easy. Just choose. <laughs> I love that. That's brilliant, Steve. Thank you so much. Now, what have you guys got upcoming that we can tell the listeners of where they can find you? Name a couple of places they can come find you. Besides your home address, we don't want them stalking <laughs> you. We want them to go to websites. <laughs> 
Well, we have, they can find uh, some of the global work that we're doing. They can find on the two Bowmans dot com. We've got a, a European tour coming yeah, up soon. We're going to Cologne to the Rat Witches for you. We love the Germans. Yeah, website <laughs> Rat Witches for you uh, <laughs> workshop masterclass at. Uh, the early July, first yes. week in July, we are doing uh, Rat Riches for You one day class in Ireland with Dr. David Kubes on something. Bringing, uh, <laughs> bringing, some, bringing something, consciousness to business after no, no, the nine trainings. Business. Creating business beyond this reality after nine trainings. That's right. Yeah. Something like that. So that's one day straight after the nine trainings in Ireland. And, and is then, this all on rightriches.com as well? They can find that out? Yeah, right. we we'll, we'll just made that choice yesterday, so we're going to start putting all this thing up So on now. the Facebook page also there's, um, what is it, Right Riches for You forward yes. slash We are going to moments. do a lot of, you know, intro Zoom with David and with, our, with the German people and we're also going to do something for Italian as well once we can settle the date and things. So we're going to do Europe in uh, June, July. Awesome. And then obviously English-speaking people can come because I don't think that you've learned to speak German or Italian recently. So uh, yeah. it will be translated into German and Italian. But, yeah. but anyone English-speaking can come on board and, and listen Absolutely. to Stephen Jutissa Bowman. So check out the 2 bowmanscom and the two is the digit two and also rightriches.com. Um, I think they're on accessconsciousness.com yes. yes. as well. Lots of different places. And if you want to hear more podcasts, you can go to Simone Millis's, M-I-L-A-S-A-S dot com uh, forward slash podcast. And don't forget to find a Joy of Business facilitator near you as well, accessjoyofbusiness.com. And I've also got two special Zooms coming out at the end of this month. You do need to have done a bars class. So if you haven't done a bars class, get yourself to a bars class because I had no idea what I would do if I wasn't getting my bars run. It's friggin' brilliant. It changes everything. And one of them is on uh, no expectations in business. And the second one is being irrational in business. So they're two days in a row at the end of April, 26th, 27th of April, Australia time. So you work it out. Go to um, accessjoybusiness.com and you'll find the classes on there. So I want to thank you both, Stephen and Tutisa Bowman, for joining me yet once again. You guys are always – you you. You inspire me every single time I talk to you and I'm looking forward to actually coming down to Melbourne at the end of April and going out to dinner with you guys and seeing Yay! what we can create. That would be so much fun. That The choice of uh, choosing the restaurant is truly irrational. <laughs> it looks amazing. So Brendan and I are very excited to come down there and meet with you guys. It's always an absolute pleasure. So thank you for joining us on here today and I'll see you guys soon. And listeners, tell all your friends about it. Press the like button. Do all that sort of stuff. Go visit me on Instagram, Simone Melissa's. Thanks for joining us. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye Simone.